faith in him always and speak on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. For blessing in nothing is blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, thy king thou shalt be. Thy friend in thy conduct, his likeness shall be. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever the time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Send the future for study aboard. Is this again this morning? He said, God cannot put us in hell forever. He said, You people are heartless to be telling people like that. He said, I don't deny God will not punish this person. Yes, maybe for some time. He said, But we will not be there till eternity. I begin to cry. I opened the scriptures. He said, leave me, but that one is not possible. I cried. I said, it is possible. Before I left them, before I was working to work, I told her, I said, I hope God will prove himself to you. I left them. They were laughing. They were provoking me. So I just left them and I was going to work with tears. On Wednesday, the 13th of February 2013, we went for a funeral bearing of a friend, a family friend of ours, a young man. He died. He was a friend of my elder sister Linda. They were in the same thing. We went to this church. When I saw my sister, what she was putting on, I was paused. But who dare me to tell her that in a church? I just look at her and say, God have mercy. We were right there and then she told me, said Fifi, because that she had to call me. He said, a, a strong voice is telling me that I'm next to die. I look at her and said, the only thing you should do is to pray. I said, only prayer now can save you. She said, I'm saying this thing and you're thinking it's fun. He said, he, he said, a voice is saying to me, I'm the next to die. I said, pray. But her mood changed. She became quiet. She was not the normal Linda I used to know. She became quiet. She would do things normally, but yet still she was not saved. We went home. She was too quiet. On Thursday, the 14th of February, how many of us know that People in the world say it's Valentine's Day. In Sierra Leone, they, they will even give you holiday to celebrate it. They honor it. So, Thursday morning, I was expecting my sister I used to know to be on red. Because that's the color they used to celebrate it there. Red and white. I was expecting her to buy alcohol to call her friends. But she did not get up in the morning. She was sad. I know this is not the Linda. So I went to her room. I sat close to her and said, Sis, what is happening? I said, I'm not seeing any call. And this one, you're quiet. What is happening? He said, Finda, I'm not feeling okay. He said, this voice is still telling me that I'm going to die. I said, pray. Only pray now. I said, I have nothing to tell you. Only pray. So one of the friends, the friends that they used to be in the world together called her and then we have party, this and that. So she said, okay, let me go. Maybe I have some ease of myself. And then she wear a dress and then went there. But she did not stay there for 30 minutes. 
The leader I used to know will not come back until we have slept. When I saw, I was like, is there nothing outside there or what? And said, I said, somebody is telling me that I'm going to die and they are telling me about Valentine. She came back. We spent that day, for the first time in my life, a holiday at home. And I spent the entire day with my elder sister. We were together, we eat, we, we talk. On Friday morning, the 15th of February, I wake up by 6 a.m. to wash for work. I just, from my room to her room, I just heard her shouting, Fida, I'm dying. Come and pray for me. I was, she said again, Fida, I'm dying. Come and pray for me. So I rushed into her room, collect my Bible, and then start. But I look at her, she was on the bed. She was trying to come to me. She immediately she stood up. She fell back. The hands and the foot has no more life. And I said, we cannot joke with the enemy. That was the time I really know that she's going to die. I begin to pray. I begin to pray. But in my heart, I begin to remember God of the covenant he made to me concerning my family. I begin to put him into remembrance that she cannot die. After one hour, 30 minute prayer, she said, look at demons. He said, they are here to take me, Finder. He said, there's no mercy for me, I'm going to die. Fresh white foam begin to come out of her mouth. She was struggling with her heart. I called for water, I prayed on it, I gave it to her, she still continued. Because that was what God instructed me to do. It's not that it's acceptable in the sight of Jesus. When she went to the bathroom, she was still tormented, still crying with her heart. And then she said, I want to lie down. And I said, okay, lay on my lap in the parlor. When she lay down on my lap, I continued in fervent prayer. If you are outside there, don't relent for your family. A day will come that you will rejoice. That everything you went through is for the glory of God. I keep on praying. And she said to me, say, Fifi, I'm going to die. She looked at me and she breathed heavily. Off she goes. I was, <laughs> this is not possible. I keep on praying. I was in science stream before I transferred to commercial. They taught us that when somebody went off, touch the paws of the hands like this for some second. If the person is in coma, you will know. If the person is not in coma, you will feel nothing. So I decided to apply that. I touched her, I squeezed her, nothing. I waited for hours, nothing. I, I performed my hand in her nose to see if she's beating my ears. I forced her. I shook her. Nothing. She went extraordinary cold. I now know Linda is dead. But I do not push out. I keep on praying with tears in my heart. In my eyes, I, will, I keep on praying. I say, God, you can't do this. Have mercy. I called on other two people. Another brother and the other one, the same partner of hers before, because now she's a new creation. And our brother was there. He was just looking like this. Is it possible for her to die now? He was just like, this thing is not serious. But he stood, he bring water, they all do what they can to help. With these two other brothers I call, we are now four with a dead body. But she was still on my lap. And the other brother decided to take her to the hospital, but I refused. I said, Jesus is not going to allow her to die. Said, Fifi, let's take her to the hospital. It's the only solution. I said, no. Jesus is the only solution. As we were in that argument, and I continued to pray, all, some, they were bringing water. Some of them just sat down because they know it's over. The dead body just stood up. My elder brother thought it was a spirit. He was like, 
the body just stood up and he said I am Jesus the son of God I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end I am the God of the universe I am here today in your house because I have a message for you and the church he, he said finger take pen and book write everything I am going to say and warn my people so when the Lord Jesus said that I knew it was God I took pen all the pens that I used to study I went to my study table collect pen and book this is one of the books there's another one full with what Jesus said to us and I sat in front of him he was like this I was like there he then sat down in the parlor. He said, As I have told you that I'm the Alpha and the Omega, I am in Sierra Leone now. I am here to deliver my people before my coming. He said, The church in Sierra Leone has failed me. He said, the body of Christ in Sierra Leone is not of me. He said, they have divided me. And I am one. I am not two. He said, tell them that I am not in them. They should come back to me. Repent and do what I call them to do. He said, they have failed me. He said, the reason why I entered into the flesh of your sister, he said, it's because if I should have entered into your flesh, people in the world should have said, it's normal. That's how Finda is. He said, but I'm using her to tell the world that I'm using anybody I want to use. I will use anything I want to use. He said, I will use a madman. He said, I will use a prostitute. He said, I will use a child that does not have a teeth in his mouth to tell them that I'm coming before I come. In this land, Sierra Leone. He said, this is not Linda. He said, Linda is in a place where she is suffering because of the sin she committed. He said, but when she comes back, feed her, encourage her, speak to her of me, and tell her, that this body does no longer belong to her. I will use her in the market. I will use her in the house. Anywhere she goes, this body it now belongs to me. Encourage her. He said, There is a bishop in our land that fake Jesus is appearing to. He said, Any Jesus or anybody that appeared to you and said he is Jesus, he said, one, ask him if he is the son of God. Two, let him show you the mark. He said, if he doesn't have any of those two, he said, he will disappear. He said, no demon dare to say that he is the son of God. He said, before that demon or anybody will say he is the son of God, I will strike him to death. He said, Finder, look into my eyes and you will see me, Jesus. He said, hold my hand. I get hold of his hand. I look into his eyes and brethren, I saw Jesus. He was crying. He said, look at my hand. I died for you. Look at my foot. I died for you. What else must I do to save you? He said, continue writing. So I left hold of his hand and I continued to write. He said, any book that is not the Bible, any book that does not conform with the Bible is not of me. And anybody who reads or follows that book will go straight to hell. He 
it said tell all those people who believe in that book in those books that they should believe in me that I am the only way to my father's kingdom he said Finda I choose Linda she was in her mother's womb he said but Linda is stubborn he says she is so stubborn he said but I have come and I'm going to use her he said Finda I choose you the day that your mother gave back to you he said I choose you to go out and preach my word he said but you are working for man he said resign from that work and work for me if not, you will call upon me and I will pretend that I don't know you. Brethren, I resigned immediately. And when I went to resign to the human resource officer there, you know what she tells me? She said, God, because she's a Christian, he said, God always tell me that you are just waiting here. That one day you will leave us to do his work. He said, we have no problem go and do the work of God. I lay the resignation letter and then I turn out. I said, I'm not resigning from your office. I'm resigning totally from work. And I'm going to the place where God has called me. The Lord Jesus said, there are only three pastors in Sierra Leone, the entire Sierra Leone, that I recognize. He said, they are the only pastors who are preaching for my heart. Number one, Pastor Francis A.M. Mambu of Faith Healing Bible Church. He stood his terms for holiness. That man can never compromise anything called holiness. He said he is preaching for my heart. He said he is my son. He said secondly, Pastor Emeka Mozi, he is a Nigerian. He is in charge of Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. The headquarters is in Nigeria. He said, he is preaching the word from my heart. He is my son. Thirdly, he said, Pastor Ezekiel Bemba Sise of the International Church of Salvation, Christ-Centered Ministry, our national candidate. He said he is preaching from my heart. He is my son. Tell them to go out and tell others, I am coming now. Before he will say soon, but when he came to us, he said, I am coming now. Hallelujah. He said, Finda, I am the owner of Holiness Revival Movement. He said, Holiness Revival Movement is for my heart. He said, everything they do, I am in it. He said, I'm going to use them in this last stage. Before my coming. He said, tell every pastor, everyone, to join in. I am the owner of Holiness Revival Movement. Hallelujah. He said, I am not a God of anointing oil. I am not the God of handkerchief. I am not the God of soap. I am not the God of water. He said, I am Jesus, the Son of God. He said, anybody who uses these things is not of me, and I am not of him. I am not in them. Pray for yourself. I die for all of you. Whosoever call upon me, I will answer. He said, these men of, these pastors, because he instructed telling us not to call them men of God, we should call them by their title. Many of them are 
anointed by Satan himself. Some of them I call them, but they have turned their back away from me. He said, one day, or else I will close the gate of grace over their life. I will trample upon them before my coming. I will raise my children and I will put them down and lift my children up in Sierra Leone. He said that. He said, Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you are sending my children to hell. He said, The reason why I say so, you have ignited pride inside of them. He said, Some of you don't believe that if you pray, I will answer you, except Pastor lay hands upon you. He said, In the morning, in the day, in the night, some of you will just troop into their house. He said, by doing that, you send them to hell. He said, they will have pride and they will talk from me. He said, whosoever doeth that, I will punish you. Excuse me. He said, these men of God are not, he emphasized deeply on the body of Christ of Sierra Leone that they are not of him. One of our cousins, one of the brothers that was um, close to the Lord Jesus as he was sitting down, tried to pamper him. You know when somebody is crying, you want to pamper the person. He said to him, you cannot pamper me unless you do my work. He tried to wipe his tears because he was crying bitterly. He said, I am Jesus. You can't wipe my tears except you do my work. Brethren, the human snot that used to come out from our nose is yellowish. The snot from the Lord Jesus when he entered the flesh of my sister was sky blue. I'm not exaggerating. I saw it. Sky blue. This brother took clothes to wipe the nose of our Lord Jesus. And this knot will not come down, will not cross the mouth. It will only stop here. I saw it. But it was moving. He tried to wipe his nose. He said, I have warned you. This is not Linda. I am Jesus, the Son of God. If you want to wipe my nose, do my work. Tell people I'm coming. Tell them that I'm coming. One day, because my coming is now. He said, if these pastors do not turn away from their wicked ways, I will trample upon them before I come. He said, Finder, I am now with you people in your house. He said the devil has released thousands of demons to destroy this testimony. He said, but I am with you. Anywhere you go, speak my word. I am with you. He said to us, I take pleasure of being with you in your house this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord take pleasure when we believe in him. When we honor him, Jesus is honored. He loves us so much. Let us live for him. In the evening, when the Lord Jesus said this, he said to me, I am going to leave you people now. He said, stand up. Let me bless every one of you. We stood up, and then he stood in the dead body. He said, Finder, before he stood up, he said, I want to pray for your elder sister that is in the state. He said, she's tormented. He said, but I'm going to hold you and use you to pray for her, and she become calm. He said, hold my hand again for the second time. I hold his hands. Immediately I touched his hands. It's not that the hands I used to church of my sister was white, cold, 
and was extraordinarily soft. I feel cold. My feet, I was, I was panicked. He said to me, Fida, steady your feet. I became calm. He said, he prayed for my sister. When he was praying, I do not feel like I am the one. I feel different. After he let go of my hand, and our elder sister called, and she said, I was just torment. It's why I just feel peace in my heart. And then the Lord Jesus said, ask her of what she wants me to do for her. And I said, Lillian, Jesus said to ask you what you want us, what you want him to do for you. She said, I want to know Jesus. I want my daughter to know Jesus. He said, this is my request, my only request. But then you see Jesus smiling. He said, because of this, I will show myself to her in America. He said, I am the God of the universe. America is my footstool. And then he stood up. He blessed each and every one of us. Before this time again, my elder brother, who sister called before he called me, never believed that Jesus was the one speaking. Because he knew Linda. She cannot do morning devotion. She can't study Bible before. She doesn't love those things. So when she was talking, when the flesh was talking, she, he thought it was still Linda. The Lord Jesus said, wake him up. He was sleeping. He said, wake him up. When I tapped him, I said, the Lord Jesus is calling you. When he turned, the Lord Jesus exposed his secret parts that nobody knew of. Only him and God. He began to cry. As we are talking now, he is a saved, born again Christian. He cried and said, Lord, have mercy. I thought it was Linda. The Lord Jesus then blessed us. Every one of us that we are there, everything that was hidden, the Lord Jesus told every one of us. The other brother, he is a saved Christian. But he loved his book. He is intelligent too much. So he thought the book will make him be successful. The Lord Jesus said, if you don't serve me, your book is nothing. I am the owner of education. I am the owner of wealth. I own everything. If you live for me, I will bless you. The other brother did not believe. He has unbelief. The Lord Jesus spoke to him. And everybody in the house became saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord Jesus stood in the flesh of our sister. When he, when he stood up, just as he was talking to his disciple in the days of whole, when he came out of our sister, you will see white shadow going up in the cloud. And our sister, the empty corpse, fell back. And one of our brothers washed to all her head so that she will not hit her head on the ground. What the Lord Jesus told us that she doesn't know everything is here at Britain. After 15 minutes, I was praising God. I was, I was in tears. I was in joy. She begins to shiver. She was shouting cold. I'm feeling cold. We used four blankets to cover her to no avail. The ground was shaking. The chairs, everybody was freezing. I was crying. I was praising God. These other brothers with me were singing praise and worship. Imagine people who don't want to praise God in the morning. <laughs> and when she came back to life, she said, what is happening? You are praising God. He said, if it is for Finda, I know that is a normal routine. She has to praise God always. She has been used to this. But you, 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 what is happening? When do you start singing praise and worship in the morning? She said, what is, she said, you people, I want to eat. She said, I'm not feeling normal. I said to her, you will never feel normal again. I 
I said, the Lord Jesus used your body. He said, me? He said, if it was you, I should have understand because you are holy. He said, but me? I'm unclean. God cannot use me. <laughs> I said to her, I said, God has used me. Say, fit that is a lie. God can't use me. I'm a sinner. I said, well, the Lord Jesus said to tell you that he is going to use anybody and you are part of them. She said, if that's what she said, I'm going to pray. When she went to pray her burden, the Lord Jesus manifests again in her flesh. She begins to speak things. She, she now remember of the punishment she went through hell and heaven. As she was speaking, I was writing. She will tell you of that. The evening hours. During this time, I Pastor Member called me. Because I've been trying to get him since 6 a.m. in the morning. Imagine I was unable to get him. But when the Lord said, you are going to get him, it was in the evening hours. He called me. And I said, Pastor, God has proved himself in our house. Come. So he thought it was me. I said, it was, this is not me. I said, it's my sister. He said, that's your sister. I said, it's my sister. Come. He came. Immediately he entered. There was bangles, bracelets, made with beads in her hand. And she was having false painted nails. The Lord ministered to him. I'm the one speaking. Cut off those beads for my hands. I had to take knife. She, he instructed me and I obeyed. I took knife and cut it off. Knowing that my sister was struggling to fight with the devil. Because she carried something that the devil owned. When I caught all those things, I just saw her raise her hand and hit the ground. Later, when she was normal, after five days, I asked her, I said, why do you do that? He said, the Lord God told me to hit the ground and cause earthquake to open in the spiritual realm so that these demons that we are surrounding the house will enter. He said, but because of this bracelet, I was unable. He said, when you caught it off, then I was able now to do. She continued saying, the things that she went through. And the devil was hearing all of that. She said to me, Finda, these false nails in my hand and in my feet, the devil is using them to see me. He said, they are mirrors. He's using them. He's seen everything I'm saying. Please take them off my fingers. Imagine, Linda, if I took her to text to burn it, I will not have lunch for the rest of that week. <laughs> she now said, cut it off. I took knife immediately for her not to change her mind again. I cut it off quickly. I asked for mercy for her. And then she said, the devil is no longer seeing me. Hallelujah. 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 She continued talking until 4 p.m. in the morning. I was writing this my hand was beginning to swell the flesh but my spirit was there to write i continue writing we slept 6 a.m again in the morning we start she continued talking she continued talking god continued to manifest himself inside of her the gift of prophecy begins to overtake her on that saturday night one of her friends came to our house, the best friend of her. She was there, she see the things the Lord was doing. She was like, hmm, hmm, because she knew the Linda. She said, God, God is wonderful. At night, the Lord Jesus left her body. This girl thought it was fun. She called her mother and said, hello, mama. The thing, she called Jesus Christ a thing. He said, the thing that was happening to Linda has stopped. Now you can talk to her. And my sister Linda, as a baby Christian, does not know that that is an offense, a great offense against God. She laughed. <laughs> I grieved. I said, Linda, it's wrong. I said, don't call God a thing. She look at me like she she look at me like she used to look at me, but she cannot talk. She went inside and sleep. Midnight around four again, three four. Alma, 
on her head. Bwah. She thought it was demon. For me, I was alert always with her because I know God is using her. So immediately she woke up. Jesus! I was there. I find every demon that is hitting my head. The Lord Jesus said, shut up. It is not demon. It is me. Today your friend called me a thing. And you laughed. After I have shown you my glory. After I took you to heaven and air. After you have seen how big and great I am. You laughed. I will flog you. Brethren, I'm not exaggerating in the name of the Lord. I can see my sister from here. She be dragged to there. She was inside her room. The angel of the Lord dragged her out with force from, or from the bed to the sitting room. From the sitting room, he was hitting her on the wall. Anywhere they hit her, the body will swell. I fell on the ground and began to cry. I said, God have mercy. I said, she is a baby Christian. She does not know anything. Immediately, I said that word with tears. She fell down. Boy. If you see, blood was coming out from her mouth. She was hopeless. She was crying bitterly. She was, her flesh was tattered. The swelling goes down again. This is a friend that called Jesus thing, God have mercy, took a bag. Oh yeah? She ran away. We have not seen her. Anytime we call her to the house, she said, me, I'm a sinner. Jesus is in that house. Hallelujah. She ran. She never came back to that house. She, she is now no longer friend with Linda. Imagine best friend, family friend, she's separated. That is what it will cost us when we live for God. But it's all for good. After they are finished flogging her, Sunday morning, the Lord came again to our house. And he said, he gave us instruction what to tell his people. Everything I've said. And we, he said, Finda and Brother Charles, I bless you because you have ears to hear to me. He said, do you love me? You know you man. Jesus, we love you. He said, when the time comes, I will know. I cried. I said, Jesus, give me grace and mercy. That even if I'm going to die, let me still love you. We continued. We went to church, Pastor Ezekiel Bemba's ministry, that is where we attend. After we went for Holiness Revival Movement meeting, Sister Linda never loved Pastor Ika before. If she sees him, his cassette, she will, she will throw it away. If I put holiness cassette in the DVD, she will say, take it off. If you want, go and buy yours and watch it. But in mine, no. On that day when we went for holiness revival movement meeting, the Lord spoke to her. I am going to show you my son. And in him, follow him. She said, Fifi, Jesus said he's going to show me his son. I said, listen, he's going to show you. I sat close to her. Immediately they played the cassette for us. Pastor was talking about sin. I cannot actually remember the topic. She turned and said, this is my son. She pointed to Pastor Ikai. She said, Jesus said, this is his son. She begins to cry. She said, God, have mercy of all the evil words I've said against Pastor Rika. Forgive me, God, forgive me. She said, God, Jesus said, this is his son. He's preaching for my heart. He belongs to me. After the message, she testified. She now go down on her knees 
and said, I give my life to Jesus. She surrendered. Other people, people were too big inside and give their life to Christ. This testimony has turned Sierra Leone upside down for Jesus. Muslims are coming to Jesus. Muslims are coming to Jesus. If you see Muslims, if you see Muslims, people are crying. Many people said, people are calling over the phone and confessing witchcraft over the phone. People say we have never heard that Jesus hates this, hates that, but now we know we have repented. These pastors that God told us to warn, they rise up against us and said we are from the underworld. They went to radio, television, me, Sister Linda, Sister Ayo, they say we are witchcraft, we are from the underworld, we are from the sea, they call us all kind of names. We thank God because the scripture is being fulfilled in our lives. Yeah. They call Jesus. They say Jesus was using witchcraft power to heal the sick. If they call us witchcraft, that truly really tells us we are of Jesus. So, she gave her life to Christ. On Friday night, I saw where angels were giving her food to eat. At 4 o'clock, after she was talking, talking, you know the flesh, she was tired. She said, I want to eat. There was no food, so I rushed and prepared food. I gave her. But she said, when she put it in her mouth, the food is coming out of her flesh. And the Lord Jesus said, I should not give her that food again. He's going to feed her with spiritual food. I sat and began to watch her. Other people were there now because many people should have, have entered the house. She lied down flat. I saw her eating. She was chewing. She drank water, but I did not see the angels. I just saw her doing the actions. And after she belged, and she said, I'm full. For three days, she was unable to eat earthly food. She was just constantly feeling. Feel. On Monday and Tuesday, she started drinking water and juice. Wednesday, she started eating normally. Before she gave her life to Christ, when the Lord wants to speak to her or enter her, she will feel pain. But on Sunday, since she gave her life to Christ, she did not feel any pain. God has transformed my sister. God has transformed my family. Before, we are not best friends. But now, we are best friends. We eat together, we sleep together, we discuss together, we share things together, we talk our secret part together. She is my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My eyes have seen, my hairs have heard, my mouth will talk about the goodness of God. goodness of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to choose them by God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm happy for you people that she came here to listen to this message and this holiness conference. You are blessed. Yeah. You will never be the same. Yeah. After this testimony, you will know where you fall short of the glory of God and in the end, God will walk in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Jesus blessed Jesus oh blessed Jesus oh blessed Jesus oh blessed Jesus one more Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for making us be in your presence. Father, as I give out your message, your testimony, your word, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. I pray that, Lord, as this message has transformed life in Sierra Leone, I pray that, Lord, this same message will transform life in Nigeria, all over the world. Father, move and visit them as you are doing it in Sierra Leone. You are visiting people in dream. You are visiting people physically. Father, move in Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. I greet you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bring good news from you, from Jesus to you. And people from hell give message to the world. And this majority are women. Before I start with my testimony, I will give you brief life history before I met Christ. So that people will believe that no life is nothing. Every life is something to Jesus. No matter what you are doing. I'm a Christian. My name is Linda Kumba Ingawija. I'm a Christian. I'm a student of MEBEX College, Finance and Management. I just finished my HND, IA National Diploma in Accounting and Finance, waiting for results. When I was in college, I used to head a club a sinful club. For any time I had a club, because even out when I finish my college, when I'm out of college, I form a club too. They will make me the chair lady of that club. Because I tell you, my people, those days when I was in the world, anything I do, sinful thing, I'm perfect in it. I know how to dance. If it came with rum, alcohol, I don't drink, I drink, I smoke cigarettes. I don't have pity for people like born again Christian. I don't like them. Forgive me, especially Papa. I used to call them names. I used to say this and just new way of money, this holiness revival, new ministry. Look at them. You know, I don't like anybody that look like this, but not knowing that this is the best way. This is the way Jesus loves. Any woman look like this, I tell you, if you are pure in heart and outside, you are in heaven. But I thought, because I love one scripture, that was what they taught us in church. They did not make us to understand what the scripture means. God help those who help themselves. So I think that when I was in the world, finding money in sinful way to pay my fees, to take care of the house, to buy things to dress, to put on this false hair, dress anyway, just to attract men, just to do anything that will please you. And when we have this money, we, we have this big man, I think that God is blessing me. Not knowing that I was with the devil and I'm going to hell. 
I was, I was, I used to go to a church. I was a member of the rock church, Cornerstone Ministry, the rock church. I only believe that God is good because that was what I meant to know in the sermon of these churches I used to attend. If you go to my church, they will preach prosperity in morning tonight. If my friend invites me to their own churches, it's the same sermon. You will dress anyhow. They say there is no criteria to go to heaven. One save, heaven save. When we come for Bible class like this, dress this kind of way, they will never taught us or tell us this dressing is not good or this ear you put on on your head will take you to hell or this jewelries, this makeup you use because me, I like jewelries, I like makeup, I like false hair. They will never tell us or tell us that these things you people put on is bad. We have only few church in Sierra Leone that are hard on the truth, that we tell women or men or people the hard truth. If you want, you stay. You want, you go. And when I was with Jesus, I saw the church. It was just three. This man of God we call like Pastor Emeka, a charismatic Inua. He knows me. He always preached to me. But I don't like that man. Because as for him, he don't compromise. If you enter his church right now, you put on false ear. You will stand. That whole day, he will make you example to his sermon. So I don't like going to his church. I hate that man. For any time I saw him far coming, I would just use all kind of words and tell my friend, let's go, let's go. He will start coming to preach about hell or tell us. He don't say, you people, take this thing off. It will take you to hell. As soon as you saw you say, agent of darkness, you are going to hell. Linda, change your ways. This, so I don't like him. Even if I saw him, the same man of God, I will make as if I don't see him. He will say, Linda, you saw me. Say hi to me. They will say, nah, are you the one feeding me? I don't like. But I like those men of God. When we went to their church, prosperity. This is your heir. Sow a seed. Kill the demon. Your life, God don't want your life this way. If, you, if this year finish, you don't have car, you don't have your husband, you don't travel, know that the devil is close to you. Bind the devil. We bind devil. And we are carrying devil, demon, because Jesus showed me this jewelry we are carrying. People say, anything I do, which is no, demon, no, they will stop it. Because you put on these things, this earring, this weapon, this falseness, this eyelash, this makeup, this trousers. When I was with Jesus, when Jesus was manifesting himself in me, Satan saved me through these fingernails. I told my sister, cut it off. Jesus said, I open your eyes to know what I'm telling you, people, that this thing belongs to Satan. He said, now you see, Satan is seeing you through these nails. I will come there when Jesus take me to hell the second time. Show me where this demon manufactured this, this jewelers, this air. How they ordain men of God with this handkerchief, with this anointing oil, and even give me names of them. So, I only go to church pay tight because for tight in Sierra Leone, they will add on tight. They will preach tight. We all know about tight. Even the sinner, the least, the baddest sinner in Sierra Leone, know about tight. Because every crusade you go there, we talk about giving, giving, giving. So, we don't know which kind of money to give God, not knowing that even when you are in the sin, um, if you give, there is, a, there is a blessed money to give tight. Huh? But this sinful money we have in the sinful world, don't give tight to it. 
But they did not tell us that. They say pay tight. So we too will find any way to pay tight. Because they say, if you don't pay tight, when you die, you go to hell. Because you are a thief in God's kingdom. So that was what was in my head. So from Monday, I would go out, boyfriend, give me money just for Sunday to pay tight. Not knowing that I'm in there myself. Because that was what the men of God always preach in Sierra Leone. Deliverance, 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 breakthrough, miracle. One new church that just started at Campbell Street. They, they manufacture, they say, the water they give you in the church, they imported from River Jordan. They said that it was River Jordan water. If you cry, they will give you tissue or cotton wood to wipe the tears on your eye and give them back to the, and give it back to them. They go to pray for it, pray on it. God open my eyes to see. If you want a husband, yeah, you choose the date. Say from now to June six, I want to marry. No matter what, husband will come and that day we will be married. If you see the church crowded with people, God said they are leading my people to hell. I'm in the world. I was in the world. I like dressing. I don't listen to holiness message. I don't like them. I listen to those prophetic pastors, Pastor Chris and others. I like those messages. I don't like, since Fina came to Nigeria, she came with um, Brother Sambo book, Paul Ken. I started watching Paul Ken. I was in heaven, I ate with Jesus. I said, this is a lie, take it off. <laughs> Fina said, in that listing, and wait, let the message is finished now. I said, take it off. I know to threaten her. I say, no lunch. They say, oh, Vina is not fear. I say, take it off. These people are liars. You see Jesus. Go to heaven. Go to hell. Oh, God, have mercy. That's why the demon deal with me in hell. I always say that God is not so wicked. Because I used to read this Jehovah Witness book. I was comfortable in sin because of the message and the book I used to read. These men of God don't tell us the fact, the deep truth. I was really comfortable in sin. I only know that go to church, pay tight, don't kill your brother, you know, like one another. That are the sin they tell us. But they did not tell us the deep of this message, of God only message. So when God took me to hell, heaven, and when I was in hell, the demon preached to me in hell. They know this Bible. Today when Brother Samuel was preaching to we the women about this year, some women will start. And what about this? If you see hell, you will not ask questions to add any attachment in your ear. If you see hell, this thread, this wood, you will just want God to give you a like in Sierra Leone, we say Bobo Eddie crepe all the air. This head you are looking at, this head, this ear, only if you don't do what God says, we land you in hell. No matter what righteousness you wear, no matter how you win souls for Jesus, you evangelize. If you don't obey, this thing you see, some people say, don't put the big ear in, put the small one. Some people say, think is not sin. Think. Let me tell you now. This white, this gray ear God give you, if, you, if someone is plating your ear, and then you say, remove it, remove it, because you don't want them to, to stay planting your head. Remove it, remove it. The angel are writing your name in the book of death. Proud of everything God gives you. God wants you to proud of it. You have gray hair, now proud of it. Leave it to come out. You buy it to tie it up. You tell God you don't know how to create you. You put wool on your hair. They tell you don't put revolve, don't put this. You find another thing just to make your hair different. You put wool, you put scarred thread. My mother, my sister, you are going to hell. Don't ask questions about that. Should I put on small trousers? Because when I'm going to market, I don't want my money to fall. Put it on. 
just put it on and leave it there till you die. Demon will preach to you, even if it is under the skirt. Don't wear it. Don't wear it. Don't wear it. Hallelujah. Don't put this thing on. The person is talking to you right now. Huh? I like trust. I don't have skirt. When we are prepared to come to Nigeria, Daddy give me money. We have one minister in Sierra Leone. I love God. They give me money. People in the church bless me with dressing. I don't have. I don't know how to buy skirts or dress only. Yeah. I don't know how to dress. It's now I'm buying things to cover myself. I hate holiness. Anything that is holy, holy, I don't like it. The attack, it all started on the 13th of February. I was in the funeral of my late friend, one boy. We are in sin, not in a relationship, but we meet at the club. We will drink together. If we saw us at the street, this we offer this salt and beer. We we'll smoke, we we'll joke, we we'll laugh. One day, my younger brother called me and said, Linda, he said, this brother has died. And then I said, oh my God, I saw him last week at that bar. And then we attended the funeral on the 13th of February. When I was in the church, I had a voice telling me that you are next. I said, ah, what is going on? Whose kind of voice is this? I've never had this kind of voice in my life. My heart was beating fast. I was tormenting the church. And then I stood up and said, Finn, I'm going out. He said, what? I said, no, I'm going out. So I stayed out at the church compound. Because the pastor was preaching on that boy. He's a nice boy. He pay tight. He come to church. That boy gave me a message for his, his four brothers and his parents. He's in hell. They praise that boy body as if he's going to heaven. This pastor are deceiving us. Some of these pastors, sorry. And when Finda came out of the church, he said, Linda, what is wrong? I said, Finda, something is telling me I'm the next to die. And then he said, Linda, pray. And then after we went to the house, but still I was tormented because any, for any two, three, or five, ten minutes, the voice will say again, you are going to die. So Wednesday, that whole day I was tormented. And on Thursday, Valentine's Day, my friend called me over his, oh, to her house, say, Lina, it's the usual thing. If you have money, you cook, you buy drink for your friend to come and join you. We enjoy, we spoil, talk about man. You know, those evil things, plan our life, what to do this month, where to go, how to raise money. So I went there, I think, I thought that I would be relieved of this voice. But still, we are together, they were talking, but I was far off. I was just, listening. this voice is still telling me. And then I told my friend, I said, this I have since yesterday, I said, a voice is telling me I'm going to die. And then she laughed and said, because she's my best friend. She is my best friend. Now we are, we are enemy. You don't like me. We are best friends. She knows everything about me. And then he said, Linda, he said, just forgot about it. It's okay, drink enough so you forgot about this voice. Drink, drink. But I don't want to drink. Even if I, 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 I know this voice. It's something. So I told her, I said, I'm going home. He said, ah, I'm not sleeping over. I said, no, I'm going home, I'm going home. Because the way the voice was con con uh, tormenting me, I know I have my prayer warrior at home, Finda. So I don't want to die outside the house. So I, th I thought, as Finda is in the house, so for any time I seek, even if I'm in with my friend, if I get, if I get him, I call her. If you say, Linda, we are in conference, I say conference, I say, I'm sick, come and pray for me. My faith, everything was on finger. Not then that I'm wasting my time. Put your faith in Jesus. No man of God, no prophetess, just put your faith in Jesus. 
and then I came home and then Fina said, ah, Fina, you came home early today. I said, yes, this voice is still tormenting me. And then it's okay, well, lie down. Let me prepare food for you. Because one thing about her, when we are at home, she looked like the mother. Don't see me like this, oh. I'm so not spoiled. She pampered me. She's the one said, I'm tired to come and read Bible up to now. She teach me. I love her so much. When prophet, <laughs> when prophet, she came, day before I said that, she's going to marry. I was not happy because I don't want her to go. So she said, okay, let's pray. She prayed with me. I like one thing about her. She always, even if you tell Fida, Fida don't call Fida to play when you want to eat too. You just eat. <laughs> she will pray hard. I said, no, Fida, pray. He said, Fida, pray. Only, uh, uh. She will cry. She likes to cry. I don't know if why if the, the Holy Spirit is moving in now. She prayed for me and said, okay, lie down, rest. But when I was in my room, this voice, this voice, not knowing that, I will not see the other day clearly. And then if she come around and say, let's pray. I'm going to bed. I know tomorrow I'm going for work. I said, okay, let's pray. She prayed with me. My smaller brother, me and him are enemy because we are in the world. If I sick, he will say, Finna, Linda is sick, come. He too, if he's sick, he will call Finna. We Finna is a prayer warrior. Our sister in America, if he fall here, he will call. Hello, Linda, I don't want to talk to you. Give Finna the phone. Finna, please pray for me. I'm sick. Thank God for her. One day she told us, she said, Linda, I'm tired of praying for you guys. For any time I pray for you, the ear, this ear, you will do more sin, go out, wear short skirt, this, that. I said, ah, they say short skirt too, will go to hell. He said, yes. I said, hey, eh, hey, eh, God, every day new sermon, new preaching. I said, this is just close. You just wear it. Don't mean anything to God. God look the heart. He said, Linda, God look the heart, but the outside too. This is the holy temple. I said, the holy temple is church. This is not holy temple. This is my own body. Oh, God, have mercy. And the early in the morning, Friday, 6 a.m., when I was in my room, I feel something strange started happening to me. And then I called Finda. I said, Finda! Finda! She rushed into my room and said, what? Linda, what is it? I said, pray for me. Pray for me, I'm dying. She said, Linda, don't say that word. I said, I know what I'm saying. I'm dying. And then she okay, came down from the bed, come down. And then when I want to stand, no life, I fell down. And then he called my younger brother. He said, sir, come, come, come with water, come with water. I was just sweating. I was in pain. I torment. I don't even know what is happening. I was just in pain. And then he called uh, two of our friends. One is my former boyfriend. And then he said, come, 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 come. They rushed into our house and said, what? He said, look at Linda. So they start spinning and say, let's pray, let's pray. But two of, two of them are sinners. They don't know how to pray. They were just, anything Fina say, we buy, we buy. We cast, we cast. We did. So I say, ah, these people, are, they want to kill me. I leave the room for them. Fina is behind me. We buy, we buy. They too, we buy, we buy. <laughs> I'm in pain. I, thought, I said, these people, they don't know even know how to pray. Finda pray for me. Finda say, Father. Then to say, Father. Any demon, every demon. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then Finda say, Linda, what is the problem? I say, you people are not praying. As soon as I said that, I start seeing different person, different people, demons. We are coming with black, fearful one. And then I said, oh, Finda, they are coming for me. I'm dying. 
and then he said, okay, Linda, sit. Don't move. You know, sit. Let God do something. So she, she, she sit down and then I lie on her. And then he say, say this word after me. Say, Jesus. I say, Jesus. He said, have mercy. But the demon I was seeing, they were too fearful that I was not even concentrating on her. I was afraid. And then she said, Linda, 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 say this word. I was tormented. And then I take a deep breath. All of a sudden, I saw myself in a broad way with countless people. So plenty than overmarked like this. Countless people in different color, black, white, Chinese, this. We are just walking. The road is so big, wide. We are moving. Everybody, all of us, we are just walking like this. Me, I was saying that, ah, where am I? What is wrong with me? Where am I? Who are these people? But you don't have sense to go back, to say, let me go where I'm coming from. You just go, because you just see road in front of you. We are walking, we are going. And then, when we approach the place we are going, like this junction to here, here is hell. The heat, the heat, just imagine you are far away from the place. The heat. And then I say, oh, I'm dead. Oh, God. We start hearing horrible voice. Mercy. In hell, the, there is one word, mercy. Some will shout there, oh, my head. Oh, Jesus. This is, I can't take this anymore. Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh, my God. And we, the fresh one, coming to hell. We to start shout, shouting, mercy, mercy, mercy. All of a sudden, we saw demons ahead of us coming to take us by force. When the, the demon's nails is so sharp like nimble, the nails of the, of the demon, when, sh when the demon grab you like this, the, the nails of the demon will pierce your body just to drag you, you will start seeing, you will start seeing pain, you, you will not enter hell yet. The demons are so wicked. They hate us with passion. More we that know the world. That's why I pity this man of God, this false man of God, saying they know Jesus. They, they are under, we are on top of hell, in the fire. They are under us. The bottomless feet. Their torture is too much. That's why when God sent message to them, they refuse in Sierra Leone. They want to kill me. I cry. I say, this man of God, they don't even know. Listen to the message and change your life. Because Jesus said, I'm giving them one more grace. But they don't want to listen because of their selfish interest. They don't want to lose this money. They don't want to lose congregation. And then when the demon over me, he was dragging me into, the, into hell. When you enter hell, the place is too dark. You can't see anyone, anything. You just heard sound. And you feel something is doing something to you. You can feel this is somebody is touching me, somebody is beating me, somebody is doing this to me. But you can't see anything. Because this place is too dark. The smell in hell. Oh my God. People are crying. People are crying. People are crying. People are saying, Lord, let us go back to the world. If the people in the world don't believe that Jesus, you are the way. Let's come and make our lives straight. Jesus, please give us one more chance to go back to the world. People have died for a thousand years. They want to come. Because the place, every day, the pain is fresh. And then a demon took me into the fire. When, before the demon threw me into the, into the fire, he said, I'm going to torture you for all those evil things you put on your body. 
And then I start, he said, I will start with your head. And then I will start asking, what have I done with my head? He said, those false here. You people have the word. You people know God. You people challenging God. You people, you know, the try right way. You choose to come and meet us here. We will be with you today. I know everything is finished. I started refreshing all my memory. I said, oh God. I don't know. Have mercy. Have mercy. And then the devil starts with my head. In the fire. You are in the fire. You are tormented with the fire. The fire is burning you. The fire don't look like this normal fire we saw in, on earth. The fire look like water. It look like swimming pool. When you enter the fire, instant, you will be like 10,000 you um, person that died, how rotting, how the body looks like. Just they just throw in the fire. But for any for for but in the fire, your body will melt like plastic and it will be filled, refresh again. That's why God says eternity. The pain, the feeling you have right now, if somebody pinch you or do something to you or hurt you. How you feel right now? That's the same feeling you have in hell. And the devil started torturing me for my head. You know when we are on earth, we used to use mingle and thread to sew our move on on our head. They will use iron as if it's a needle. They will bust the skull because there is no air in the head. They will bust the skull. The devil will be happy when doing this. They will laugh. They will force the, the, the iron to enter my head, bust like this, make it like this. They will just design, design the head. The head will, will, I will feel pain. I thought that this was just the head. I said, oh God, this is too much, my head. And then they said, we are not finished yet. We are coming to the eye. For eyelash, eyebrow, if you have a daughter that is putting on this thing, you don't want to listen. Just see her now. Just begin to cry to God. Because like one of my friends, she's in hell. Her father is reverend. She is praying to God, let her, let, let his, let her father come. Let her father come to hell. Sorry. Because her father knows the truth of the Bible. She, he did not want them. Her father used to buy trousers for them. Give them money to make their air. He said, so he wants his father to be in hell. And the demon starts taking off my eyes, pluck it out with hot hair. They will, as if they are fixing this eyelash we used to fix in this eye. They will use sharp iron, took in it. They will, oh my God, Father, have mercy. Please, my people, don't be in hell. Please take this message out. Please don't be in hell. Hell is real. I'm one of those people that say hell is not real. That's why God made me pass through hell. Hell is real. Nobody can describe hell. Because hell is really a tormented place. Don't be in hell. Let cigarettes or just 2,000 Start, uh, beer, take it to hell. Or air you can buy, take it to hell. You will be discouraged if Jesus told you, you are going to hell because of hearing. Just hearing. Just trust us. Please. Please. It's true. These men of God are not exaggerating the Bible. They are saying the truth. Holiness in God is saying the truth. If your pastor is telling you this in your church, he is saying the truth. Don't put this thing on. Don't ask questions. Don't argue. And then, after they finish with my eye, they come to my mouth. For this cigarette I used to smoke, the bad word I used to take out of my mouth to tell people for this rum, this alcohol I used to drink. Oh God. 
the demon. They will do all sorts of wicked things to you. I don't know why. I don't know. They will just they will just imagine something to do to you. You see this will come. Take armor or spanner. I don't know the tools. You see, they will start meeting your teeth. They will they will hold your tongue, draw it and cut it. You will have flesh feeling. And then they will say, Look, this is a beer, drink. You say, No, I don't want to drink. He say, Drink. And when you drink, you think that it's water or it's beer. It's acid. When you are on earth, they say, Drink acid. How you feel is how you feel in hell. As soon as I take that acid, I think it was alcohol because hell is too hot. You don't sweat in hell so that you will lick it. So, as soon as I drank the, 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 the drink, I thought it was beer. My throat from here to my belly to my private spot was open. It was melting. You know when acid is destroying something? That way it destroys in me. I will shout. I will cry. I say, oh God have mercy. I don't know. Why do you create me in the first place? That's the question I used to ask God. I say, if you know this is the punishment, I don't know. You should have just you, you should not have created me. And then, they came to my private part, fornication. Thank you, Jesus. Fornication. You are married, you still have boyfriend. You don't satisfy with your husband. You are a single lady. You are still from one man to another. Don't die in, don't die in that kind of sin. The, the demon opened my foot like this. Use a sharp object. They were just, they were just inserted it in, in and out of me. My gut, my womb, everything in me. We just coming out. I feel pain. I feel pain. They will not stop. This is on my head. This is on my eye. This is on my mouth. This is my private path. And then there is a worm, something that will eat your flesh in hell. And when I came back to life, I asked that. He says it's in the Bible. When that animal bites you, it's just like when you're on earth. When dog bites you, jack your flesh. That's how you feel. So there is too much pain. Demon is on you. And one is on you, the fire too is on you. You will just cry. You will just feel pain. You will hear this will shout there. Oh, God have mercy in my head. This will say my eye. This will say my foot. This will say my private part. This will say, oh God, this is too much. This will say is this. This will say with this, that. It's my bishop. Oh God. I was in that pain. I was in hell. Tortured. Tortured. Some people go to hell and heaven, they saw the fire, they cry. They tell you people with fear, I'm from the hell in the fire. This fire God is telling me about is real. I don't even, when I was in heaven, when God took me to heaven, I said in my heart, I don't want to come back. I don't want to come back. And then when I was in hell, this torture continued, continued, continued. My deliverance from hell. I thank God for hearing my cry. I thank God for choosing me. I thank God. I thank God for the covenant he told me, he made with me. I thank God. I thank Jesus. For showing me mercy, I thank Jesus. I saw a great light, a great power like magnet was moving me from the fire. I was coming up. 
But I thought I was going to another place for more torture. I don't think it was deliverance. I don't think they are coming to deliver me. I don't think God heard my cry. I just think that this is over, finally. And then I, I noticed I land at a ground. I saw a great light. A great light. A man stood in front of me. He did not say a word. He just looked at me and then turned. I was following him. When I was in heaven, I asked Jesus, I said, who is that man that go and collect me? That's why always when I'm giving my testimony, I say it's Father Moses. Because Jesus told me in heaven that I sent Moses for you. Father Moses did not say any word to me. He just looked at me and then told me we are going. When I, when I appeared before the gate of heaven, I saw angel come in front of me. And then I noticed Father Moses is not there again. And then the angel rushed in front of me. They started to transform my body. They gave me a glorious body because I was unclean to be in front of Jesus. They want me to be clean, to be holy and pure before Jesus. So they change my body. They change everything about me. They give me this holy body, glorious body. And I enter into heaven. When the gate of heaven opened, I saw a great light, a wonderful light, a big light that is, is all, over the, all over heaven. The light was coming from one place, but it was, the light was shining all over heaven. And then I, 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 stood, I stood up and said, ah, what kind of light is this? My eyes, my eyes. I can't see clearly. But even if I want to cover the light, to cover the, 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 the light, to stop penetrating in my eyes. The light will pierce in my hand. I will still see the light. I said, ah, oh, what kind of light is it? And then I had a big voice. A voice, when you put thunder, this thunder we are having, this light in wind, see this in time. 10,000 thunder, put them together. When the Lord Jesus said, welcome my daughter, Linda, the voice. I said, most human beings have this kind of I was I was saying, ah, but the light still was tormenting me. I was making like this, ah, my hair, what is this? Who is this? What is this? And then I start seeing the light modify himself into a big man, a wonderful man, a glorious man. I can't describe Jesus. I can't describe Jesus. Jesus is a, is a wonderful man. No wonder Jesus is really the Son of God. When I saw Jesus, I did not look at this and saw Jesus. Since I, when I start looking at Jesus from his feet, I will ace my head, go up, go up, go up, and then he will smile. And then say, welcome my daughter. Jesus is loving. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. And then he said, I'm Jesus, the one that died for you, Linda. She held my hand. He held my hand like this and raised me up. I feel peace. Pray for Jesus to touch you. I feel peace. I forgot about the pain in hell. I was so happy. One thing I noticed, I, I like about my Lord. When I was in art, I like fine men. Jesus, I was just looking at Jesus because Jesus is so handsome. Jesus is so handsome. There is no but. Like human beings say, this man is fine, but his teeth, eh? his head is too big, small. Jesus. 100 perfect, 100% correct. 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And then he took me in heaven. Show me places in heaven. Heaven is so big. That's why you see many people go to heaven. Everybody come with this plain description of heaven. Heaven is too big. Heaven is too big and wide and beautiful and clean. Everything is made in heaven. Gold, diamond, just name it. You see angels, beautiful angels, up and down, working for us. We are wonderful people. Angels, we admire. They are working for us. And Jesus took me to one part of heaven. Show me the eyes of these believers that are in hell now. He said, this, the house is so beautiful, locked. But you know that this house, I want to be in this house. Jesus is not a liar. He said he's going to prepare a place for us. He, he done it, he did it. If you go to heaven, you see houses. Beautiful place. Jesus loves us. He said, these are the house of those believers when they are in hell. For small temptation or something, take them away of my glory. They don't know that year, that month, that week, they are going to die. They backslide and then they die in sin. They are in hell now and their house is closed in heaven. They suffer on earth, build their house. You don't enter there. It's painful. It's really, really painful. When we started this work, please don't leave it. Please don't stop the race. Please be like this for Jesus. Love Jesus. Don't stop. You don't know the time you will die. Don't stop. Don't look back. We are suffering here on earth. Anyone that is suffering for Jesus here, yeah, you, will, you will be happy. You will tell God, say, God, I thank you. Me, since I met Jesus, if any temptation is coming my way, or I'm doing anything in sin, or I know this is the work of Satan, I will tell God, thank you. Because I know, doing that temptation, doing that hard time, I'm starving to, to overcome the devil. The angels are adding on my mark. They are building my house rapidly and speedfully. So you people say, ah, this one is too much for me, this, that, 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 that. You don't have time for God. You start stop reading your Bible. You don't go to church frequent, frequently again to listen to the message. You are decreasing your mark. Stand firm in Jesus. Stand firm from the truth. Don't listen to people. Let them criticize you. Let them laugh at you. In Sierra Leone, they say all of us who look like this, we are all witch. That's what the bishop said. He said we are witch. All witch, we smell. We don't put on perfume. We don't make up. We always retire. And they say we are dirty. We are all witch. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm witch. I'm a witch. I'm a wizard. I'm a witchcraft for Jesus. And then, Jesus take me to another part of the heaven. Show me houses. Say, these are my son's daughter on earth. These are their house. This house, they are so beautiful. But I like one house. That house is look like skyscraper. Those high house you see in America, more than them. It's high, beautiful. I said, ah, Jesus, who are the people that own this one? He said, these are the people on the heart that win souls for me, that, that, that do their own, that provide their own finance. They don't ask for anything. 
You know those kind of believers, those kind of born again. They don't cry, say, Lord, I want to go. Provide transport for me. Lord, I want to do this. I want to do good. Provide for me. This believer Jesus is talking about, they find money for their self. They go. Some of them, they walk from one town to another just to go and preach. They win soul for Jesus. They do good out of their own pockets. They don't mind. If they sleep hunger, they give another person food. Just because they are obeying God, they love what God loves. They will never say, Father, please, bless me with finance. I want to bless somebody. Bless me, bless me. All the time you come to church, bless me, bless me. These are the people that came to church say, Lord, give me your grace. I want to do more for you. Just give me grace. Then all in the morning, you see them off. Go and preach to people. People will laugh at them at their area. People will criticize them. They don't bother. If you see those house for you people, you know the people Jesus is talking about here. If you see your house in heaven, you will start doing God's work without asking God for anything. Do it willingly. Heaven is a place where I don't want nobody to miss. Heaven is beautiful. Heaven is so sweet. The, the air in heaven, I don't know. If it is hot or cold. I say when I'm in hell, I don't want to come back. I said it in my mind. I said, because Jesus said, I'm going to give you a message to my people in Sierra Leone. And then I frowned. I said, I don't want to come back in that. And Jesus looked at me and said, Selfishness. <laughs> say you are not fit to, you do not deserve it. I, I took it from hell. Now I'm sending you to my people you say you don't want to go. You will go. And if you go to that book, and if you go back to the world, and then you decided to sin again, I will throw you back. I say, ah, Jesus, have mercy. And then me and Jesus was walking. I saw something in heaven. Angel was up and down, up and down. They were busy doing. You see their all clothes in their house. This we go this way. This we talk this way. This we go up and down. This we did. And then I said, ah, Jesus, why this angel are just up and down? Why everyone so busy? He said. They are preparing for my saint, my people. My time is near. I'm coming. The clothes, the, the clothes we are going to wear, the saint, they have already sold it. They have already prepared it. So on. They, are, they store it now. It's just like when you have a visitor. Like you say, my son or my daughter is coming from America. Let's clean the house. Everyone, they are cleaning. They are preparing a place for us. Please, leave that scene now. The way, rapture, the, way, uh, the way testimony are coming out, the way Jesus is moving worldwide, every day you go to the internet, you hear, you, hear, you see, you read, this, Jesus visited this, tell, tell the world, I'm coming, I'm coming. Me, I saw Jesus, they were wearing sandals on his feet. I have to tell you that Jesus is dressed. I saw Angel Michael. When my sister in the Lord described Angel Michael in Sierra Leone and say, we are, we are fools. There will be no angel like that. The bishop say, look at this. Say he saw Angel Michael big like, small, small building, big like you building. All type of weapon is on Angel Michael. Which kind of light? This, that. In Jamaica, I stood like this when Jesus saw me in Jamaica. In Jamaica, it's really an army for Jesus. Like you, go, like you see somebody, you look at somebody, smile at you. In Jamaica, is not even shaking. Stand like this. Order in heaven. In art, you say soldier on duty. They will leave their post, go. Boss come. You will not meet them there. In Jamaican is not even shaking. He just stand. In Jamaican is prepared, is dressed with fearful ammunition. When I was looking, Sister Ios and, and plates, saying in Jamaican, 
is dressed with fearful ammunition. I say, we all type of ammunition in the world. I say, ah, in Jamaica, can carry out PG. This, I said, ah, this girl. This is exaggerating. When I saw in Jamaica, in Jamaica is fearful. That angel, God take time to build him. That's why God will release him to come and stand for his people. Holy one, you can imagine one angel for over thousands of demons. In Jamaica, it's fearfully and wonderfully made. We see the kind of ammunition on Angel Michael. Jesus said, tell them, my angel, Angel Michael, is dressed. He's just waiting for, me to, for my father to say, it's time, go. And Jesus told me, so said, he said, it's in the Bible. Um, sorry. He said, the angel that is going to increase the heat, the, the, the hotness in hell before I came before I come, sorry he said, God has already released the angel to go and do it so angel, the angel who is going to add the fire, who is going to add the heat who is going to add the, the power of hell God has released an image he has gone to do his work People are there and are crying. Now they are adding the, pay, the fire level. Don't, don't enter hell, please. And then Jesus said, He said, come. Let me show you the message and the people you are going to take. The message you are going to give these people in the world. But when me and Jesus was going, where we, where we sit and talk, I saw a woman. It, she was playing with these children. And I said, ah, who is this woman? She dressed holy, play with children, up and down. The children were round her. And then he said, this woman, she's Mary. That's why it gave me a message to the Catholic. They are busy praying to Mary. Mary is just a honorary person in heaven taking care of these children. If she did not know what is happening in her. Catholic people, stop wasting your time. Call Jesus. And Jesus sent me to some pastors, ministers, and children. When I came with a message, I decided to visit them one by one. They said they don't want to see me. I'm from underworld. I'm a demon. What they did, they gather money, they gather money to go to every radio station, preach against me, call me all kind of names, say I'm a prostitute. God will not use a prostitute. I'm a sinner. God will not use a sinner. Me, a man of God, God leave me, I'm going to talk to a sinner. God will send a message to me. Me, I will not be in the faith for 13, 15 years and then I'm going to hell. No way, I can't listen to this message this, that they don't know the message Jesus sent to them. They don't give me audience. Instead, they fight against us. They fight against us. Holiness Revival Movement, they are fighting us right now in Sierra Leone. The place where we used to have meeting, they go and pay to pull us there. They are really fighting us. Just because they don't want to listen, they don't like, they don't, they say it's a lie. And then I went to the Lord. I said, Jesus, what can I do? You send me to this man of God to go and give them their message. He said, when you come to Nigeria, To Nigeria. I told daddy, I said, Daddy, I will not publish their name. I said, because I was afraid. They said they will take me to court. They will this, they will that, they will kill me if I call their name. Some will call me on my phone. If you call my name or you call my ministry, I will kill you. I will this, I will that. So I was in a fear. And then, day before yesterday, when I was in my room, and then the Lord said, 
the, the, the beat, the flog, I flog you the last time. You see me. Your friend called me thing. Now, you are listening to this man of God. You are afraid of calling them because you think they will kill you, they will this, they will that. I said, oh Lord, I will do it. But still, I was, a, I was in fear. And I thank God for other men of God. They encouraged me. They talked to me. One man didn't even know me. He said, God lay a word in his heart. Tell me that I should do what God told me to say. Tell me to, to say. He said, don't fear anything. God is with you. And then today when I was behind there, I said, Lord, if you really, really want me to do it, if you really, really want me, I know you will fight my battle in Sierra Leone. Because in Sierra Leone, you have money, you will fight. And all the people will be behind you because you have money. I say, Lord, I'm nothing when you choose me. I know you have the world in your hand. Speak to me now. If you really want me to call this man of God. And then he say, call their name. Because I want my people to be set free from those church. And then I took pen and paper. I write all their messages. God give me. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm with Jesus. I'm with Jesus. If they take me to court, I will be grateful to preach to the lawyers, the sinful lawyers in hell, that Jesus is alive. I'm not afraid anymore. I want to die to go and meet Jesus. But I know if God says so, I will die. I know this man of God, they will give their life. They will surrender to Jesus. They will revive their life. After this message, whatever thing they will plan, they will know that Jesus is Lord. The pastor in Sierra Leone, I will start with the bishop. God give me a message to four bishops in Sierra Leone. And all of these men of God named here. It's not all the pastors we have in Sierra Leone, but these are the main pastors in Sierra Leone that have big name, that people they have large congregation, that people listen to them, that even young men of God coming up, if you don't link with these men of God, you are nothing. They will not know you, and they are polluting those young men of God. God want to use. So God said, I'm going to trample on them to give way to my young preachers coming up. Yeah. Number one, Bishop Momo, uh, Livingstone at Lonely Regent Road. He's using the same society power when he was in the world. He was in the world. When he was in the world, he was in the society power. He's still using this society power in the church now. He said he's with Jesus, but he's still using this society power. He said, tell him. He said, tell him one more grace. Tell him to preach my word. Tell him to repent. And then he go to another pastor, a bishop. Bishop C. Luke. Is a divorcee. He said, tell Bishop that no divorcee will see my face. He said, tell him, I give him a word of holiness. He has neglected the truth of holiness. He said, he said tell him, if he, don't re if he don't repent, if he don't go back and renew what that divorcee business if you don't tell the people it's all true, he say he's leading to hell. He and his wife, they are not mentor for, for his children. They are evil people. He say tell them and tell the people in their ministry that this bishop is leading them to hell because of the surface of the truth. They are not preaching his word. They are just doing this for material things. They know the truth. But they just want money. What you people like to hear is what they tell you, prosperity. And then, they go to another bishop, Achibokou. He said, he defied 
with occultic and corrupt God power. He said this bishop, he don't corrupt in message. He don't pollute in life. Now in the column in the first place, he was the one that called him to preach his word. Just because of material things, he has mixed himself with those evil big men in the world. They ordain him. He's now in occultic power. All the power and miracle is prophesying, is doing in his church, is not of him. It's an evil power. He said, tell him, one more grace. Tell him. And when Jesus was giving this message, he was telling me both for them and his wife, because they are wife, they, they are the mother of Harold in the church. If you see how those people we dress, say they are bishop wife. If you see how they fight me for this message, bishop wife. He say this bishop is, is bowing to Satan, this Archibald And then he took me to another bishop. He said, Abu Koma, Bishop Abu Koma, flamely. Jesus said, he's a bishop for himself. That's what he called him. He said, this bishop is for himself. He and his wife had defiled their bed. Both of it, him and his wife, they are unseen. They defiled their marital bed. The Lord showed me how false Jesus appeared to this bishop. When the false Jesus appeared to bishop, he did not ask this, this false man, are you the son of God? Show me the mark of the, 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 the nail. Show me the mark. As soon as he see this, 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 this demon appear to him as the form of this picture, this drawing we used to see, people saw, they say this is Jesus. As soon as he see that form of that man, that evil demon, say I'm Jesus. He bowed. Since that time, Satan was deceiving him, giving him false message, false prophecy, false power, polluting his life bit by bit. When his message came out, he said, Jesus told him that he did not send me. And then I said, this man of God don't know. He's not Jesus, he's saying. He said, him and his wife, all what they are doing now is fake. I'm with, not with them. They are sinners. And we move to another man of God. His name is Ajay Safi. He said, this minister of the gospel, with a monthly program, every month, first, second, third, he will make a large program, a large Revival that people will go for miracles, signs and wonders, things will happen. People will give testimony. Since I started coming to this church, this that God showed me where his fake power is coming from. And the Lord said, He's not serving me, He's using His fake power to draw people to His church and show as if He's preaching my word. He's not preaching my word, He's deep in occultism. He sacrificed human beings on his altar and used fake oil and kerchiefs speaking in tongues that cause spell on people. Not those, these speaking in tongues, these pastors, some of these pastors, they are false speaking in tongues. They are demons speaking in tongues. They cast spell on you, you don't know. He said he sleep with the women in church. He's leading my people astray. He said adultery is too much on him. He said, tell him he know my true word because of material things, because of money. He deviated from the truth, ordained with Satan. Satan gave him the option. He accepts the gift. He said, tell him to go back to the old truth or else I will trample on them. He said the people in that church to know is a fake man of God. And then he, he showed me another man of God. Sorry, another man of, the, of speaking and preaching the gospel because Jesus said, I should not call a man of God. Anyone I call man of God is his true servant. 
So they are, they are preaching gospel for themselves. His name is Laga, Julius Laga. Every time, early in the morning, he will be in the radio, Good Morning, Holy Ghost. A popular morning program. The Lord said to me, he's not preaching my word. He's preaching for himself, interest. And what people want to hear, what do the people want to hear, this prosperity, this, 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 that, is what he's preaching because he knows he will get money from you people. He's not telling the people the hard fact, the truth, how they should be, how the children of God should be. He's just preaching for his own interest. He's leading my people to hell because he failed to tell them the whole truth of my word. He said one more grace on him. Tell him to go back to my whole truth. Another man. Akin to last time, Julie. He said the gospel around. He said, I, he said, I was preaching. He was preaching my word at first. That man, when he opened his ministry, he was preaching God's word at first, preaching holiness. But later compromise from material things. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That was what Jesus told me. He is an our soul. He said, and even cost my daughter. Her wife was an holiness woman. He used to be like us. Be holy for Jesus. He polluted her wife. Take her from the holiness fit, from holiness dressing and behavior. Because he's not preaching the old truth again. Tell him he's heading to hell. And the Lord gave me another message from Moses K, another man of God. The Lord showed me these, three, these are three best friends in Sierra Leone Moses K, Isaac Tue, Isa Tue, and Emery Kweba. He said, These three young ministers of the gospel, one of them, I give him my own anointing power at first. That is the Moses K. Due to the bad friend and big man of God in, in and out of Sierra Leone, because he used to talk, he used to walk and listen to them, turn him to evil. Some of these ben, big men of God, they lay hands on this young pastor coming up. They are evil. They ordain them. They take them to occultic power. Tell them they will have big ministry. They will have ministry in America. Just use this way. They pollute them with advice and money. They want to be like this man or admire them. He said, he has turned him to evil. Now these three of them are out of my way. Moses K, Issa to a Weber. He said, he said they, are preaching, they are preaching for their pockets. He said, false power and prophecy. prophecy. All their frequent program, these three men of God, Every month, after two, three months, they will make program. They will make program. They will make program. They say all this, they are frequent program. Are just for money, not to save the people sold from the world. They are deep in immorality. The two church, one of them, two of them are church are in Kuto Road, and the other one is Lomli. He said, tell them one more grace. He said, they are out of my way. And Jesus took me. And give me another message for a mother in Sierra Leone, a holiness mother, Sister Dora Dunguya. The Lord show me one popular woman of God. When Jesus is giving me this message, he will not just talk. He will call me, look at my daughter, Dora Dunguya. You will see the screen of Sister Dora Dunguya. You will see the screen. You show. All these men of God, what they are doing at night, what they are doing in the occultic power, what they are doing, what they are doing. Jesus is not a liar. You two are witness. You see for yourself. Say, look. You two see. So you must say, Jesus only said, I don't see. You see for yourself. And when he says, my daughter, Dora Dumea, she appeared on the screen. This woman of God, She's the only woman of God. She don't put on this thing. She, before she preach holiness, and she's still preaching holiness. God sent message to Sister Ayo, 
say, tell her to preach holiness and how women to dress. He said, the message I give her, let her preach her. And she told Sister Ayo that God tell her the message alone to be a holy man and not to put on his dress, but not for his congregation, not for our congregation. If God wants, he will send vision to them. And God back the message again with me. He said, he said, tell, he said, he said, tell her I sent my daughter higher. She did not change. Now I'm confirming it with you, my daughter Linda. Tell her if she did not preach the whole truth of my word I gave her. And now his children and some of his fake pastors close to him, because that woman of God, he has big ministry, different men of God. Some of his pastors are fake pastors. They are polluting her. And even his children, he has some children he, he adopts and, and his own children. They are doing sin. He knows, she knows, and she's compromising. Some of us, our children will take us to hell because we are compromised. You know the truth. He said, tell her. And now his children and some of the fake pastors are leading her to hell. She know her children are committing sin. And she know the old truth of my own, my old truth, the word I give her. She has compromised. Listen. He said, listen to my warning. Listen to my warning the pastor is doing to us. Even if you listen and say, this pastor is an evil pastor, leave this church. Find holiness church. Find where they will tell you that you will say no. You will fight for this pastor. This sister, this brother is lying. My bishop, my this, my that. It's the communion. It's the anointing oil. Jesus show me when they are giving this fake man of God. It's invisible gloves. That's why they like laying hands now on people's head. They take your glory and then they leave something on you. They control your mind. You will never leave that church until Jesus deliver you. This is, this is the, the, the miracle Satan gives them. Holy communion. He said, he's leading my people astray. He's not of me. He's not of me. He said, he's walking with Satan hand in hand. All his power, miracle, is doing Satan. Is giving him that power. It's not of me. It's not of me. Tell him to turn away from this evil's way. And then another popular minister, Mike Robert. The Lord showed me how he's in immorality and his selfish interest preaching. He is preaching for his own selfish interest. Most of these men of God, most of this 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 gospel preacher in Sierra Leone. They are just preaching the same thing, just for money, just for money. Now they are making crusade, the same face, the same face. This will invite his company to come to his place or invite another man of God to come. They will just preach the same thing, perform miracles, is that. He said they are all, made, all of them are preaching for their own selfish interest. They are diluting my true word. He said they are diluting my true word. He said Mike Robert is leading my people to hell. He is not preaching the main truth. He said, come out of sin, one more grace. Preach the message I give you. And then, he showed me an anointed man of God. He said, this is my son. Francis A. N. Mabu, Faith Healing Bible Church. God showed me how this man is serving him in truth and in spirit. He's not compromising my word for nothing. Not preaching for his self-interest. He's telling my people the hard, total truth of my word. The persecution a man is going through for him and his true preaching. He said, tell him, stand firm. Anyone fight against you, fight against me. He said, go out and preach my word. Not only in your church, I'm with you. I will make your enemy your footstool. Tell him. More grace on him. I've released more grace on him. It is well with you, my son. This is for Francis Mambo. And this man, I don't like this man for this same holiness preaching. I was ashamed. The men of God I love so much in the world, I think they are men of God. 
Number one, this Bishop Archibokul. I love this man. I was thinking this is the right choice man because if he came here, we start prophesying, calling names. Oh, I see this man is seen with God, not knowing that he's seen with demon. This man of God, I hate Francis Mamo. I don't even know him. I don't like him. When Jesus was praising this man, when Jesus was happy over this man's work, and then he said, this, this, I'm going to send you to this man. He will lead you with this other pastor to take my message out. And when I met this man, he obeyed and went to God in prayer. He did not accept the message. I told him all what Jesus said. That Jesus, I did not tell him his message. I just said, Jesus, I should come and meet you. That he won't fasting and prayer for the church. This is what Jesus showed me for the body of Christ this day. He said, okay, let me know what to do. He went to God, wore all day, dry fast, pray. God, do you really sense Linda? And God said, yes. And then he called me back in his office and said, God sent you. I'm going to back up God's message. But this other man of God then did not do it. They said, the spirits tell them that I'm from demon. And they are fighting us. And God showed me another man of God. Another anointed man of God. Not knowing that this man was helping my sister. I don't like this man calling my sister. Finda, are you okay? Come to holiness. Papa, not knowing that is my daddy. He said, Ezekiel Bemba, he said, you have proved to me you love me with all a hard time. You stand for the truth, preaching of my word. I will expand you. I will make your enemy your footstool. Don't compromise. Stand for the truth. Message of holiness. Take it around the world. I'm with you. I'm with you. Today is hearing his message. And the Lord showed me another man of God. What is a Nigerian? Pastor Emeka Moose as a watchman ministry. The head is in Nigeria. He said, he's preaching my word. He's not compromising my word for nothing. I'm with you. Go out and preach. Not only in your church. <clears throat> because Pastor Emeka used to say, I'm not a Sierra Leonean, but if you want to hear the truth, come to my church. If this man of God wants me to go to their church, I will go. But I'm not forcing myself. So God said, I should tell him, not only is church to preach this holiness, go out and preach out of the church. He said, I will make your enemy your footstool. He said, this church is my church. Amen. And then he gave me another message. For one man of God, that sister, I came with a message for him. He said, he's ready to kill me. If I call his name, and I'm calling his name now, I'm waiting to die. <laughs> his name is Pastor Mahoy. In the beginning, God gave him power. God used him. And then, he deviated from the truth. Because when he had this power, he starts seeing people coming to his church. That's why God sent my sister when he appeared in her house, when he entered in my body. He said, some of us, this member, some of us, we are making this man of God to sin. Sometimes in Sierra Leone, you see people with crowd at one man of God. All the men of God to lay hands. Papa, I dream. Papa, lay hands. Papa, prophesy. These are. God said, because of this, the man grow into, into, into evil, into pride and started doing things without listening to God. And the devil enter, start deceiving him. Now he's bowing to an animal. He's washing an animal. Has power from evil place, the sea. Evil halter, temples. And he's, on sacri and he's in sacrificial practice. He's sacrificing animal, anything people he will, he, will, he will take blood to his kingdom his fornication with the women in church is fornic fornicating with the women in church 
is lying with the women in church rapidly. He said, tell him to change. He said, sin is too much on him. Tell him one more grace. And even this Ajisafi, God said, he's sleeping with a young woman, this widow, this young girl in his church. He's sleeping in and out of the church. Those college students, he's sleeping with them, flowing money on them. Ajisafi is an evil man of God. And it gave me another message for another woman. It said, Yai Kabia, Shalom Ministry. She know my true message. And she know what I'm saying to Linda is true. She know, but she joined this man of God because she is afraid to say the truth. Say, no, Bishop, this thing God says is true, but she is afraid. It said, but she is afraid. You are compromising the truth for material things. He said, who are you afraid of? Me, your Lord or man. Come out of them or you will see yourself in hell. And then, it's not only this man of God in Sierra Leone, because we have this church in Sierra Leone too. When God gave me a message for this church, I said, God, I don't know the elders, the founders of this church. He said, go to the church and tell the branch manager, the branch pastor, that is in that he will take the message to his papa. He starts with deeper life. He said, Pastor Cohen is my servant. He's preaching my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, but tell Pastor Cohen to take a tour. That's to go around the whole world. We are his church. To his church worldwide. Tell them to go out. That is deeper life people. Tell them to go out and show love to one another. Other churches. He said, tell the truth to... Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, tell the truth. Because deeper life, you people have the truth. He said, tell the truth. I give you to the people out of your church. Tell them the whole truth. Not only in deeper life. And the standard of the art true in deeper life worldwide has decreasing. Some of deeper life people are going to hell now. Some of them are compromising the truth. Some deeper life people around the world, other churches, they are not deeper life anymore. So Pastor Kumu should go around. He said, tell deeper life to pray for God revival in deeper life. So that their standard and their member will come back to God. He said, Kumi, listen to my warning. I use whoever I wanted to use. Listen, I sent Linda to you. Deeper life. Pray for revival in your life. And then he gave me another message to redeem. He said, listen to my warning. You didn't Christian faith or miracle center. He said, listen to my warning. They are compromising my world and diverted from the old truth and they know the truth. Tell E.A. Adeboe to preach my message I give him because they are heading to hell. Redeem, they are heading to hell. Winner's Chapel. Oh, yeah, the poor. They are on their own. They are not preaching the message I give them. Tell Oya the poor to go back to the message I give him. And stop preaching what the people like to hear. And for, him, and for his own selfish material things. Tell him he know the whole truth of my message. Now he's going his own way with my people. They are heading to hell. Stop. One more grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Johnson Suleiman, Omega Fire Ministry. He 
Sir Johnson Suleiman is preaching the truth on the surface. That is not preaching all the things that God wants us, the people to hear. He's not preaching the in-depth and the total truth of his holy word. Tell him to tell the church to be holy. Stop compromising my word. Mother of Harlot is in the church, in your church. Take her out. Tell him, without holiness, no man can see me. Listen to my warning, Suleiman. And then Jesus gave me a message to this Catholic Jehovah Witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give me a message to Catholic. He said, Mary is not an intercessor in heaven, but a caretaker of babies and honor a person like us. They should worship him in faith and in purity. They must follow his right doctrine. He is not a God with hand. They are leading people to hell. They are all cultic. Catholic, they are in all cultic power. He said, if you repent, come out of Catholic ministry. Tell them to preach my, old, my true, but they are in occultic power. They are in occultic power. They are occultic people. They are not preaching my word, and they are not of me. He said, repent. Jehovah Witness. They should stop deceiving people of God. They must stop their false doctrine. They are not of him. They are out of the way and they are leading their people to hell. And majority people in hell, they are crying. Say they should tell Jehovah Witness. They say there is no hell. They are deceiving them. There is hell. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when Jesus showed me this man of God, it took me again to hell. My second visit in hell. Jesus went with me to hell this time. When I was with Jesus, the brightness of Jesus, Jesus had light all over his body. When we enter that dark place, I was seeing now this time people in hell because of the light in Jesus. Jesus is walking with a glorious light, a bright light. And then Jesus opened my eyes to see some of these men in hell and women in hell. Jesus gave me a message to Sierra Leone. He said, if I should have come December to January, he said, only five people in Sierra Leone should have rapture. Five. Five. These three men of God are not there. They, 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 five plus three is eight. But the people in and out of the church, only five. When I say this in Sierra Leone, people say it's a lie. Jesus said, Sierra Leone is polluted. He said, it's shepherd. That I give them my word to put to my sheep has failed me. Majority people are dying from Sierra to, to meet God. They are heading to hell. Majority are in hell. So Jesus said, I should visit Sierra Leone. Let me send message to my people. And when we are in hell, I saw Jesus show me a glass. Like where these white people used to to go fish, men, and take care of fish. You will see these people, they will walk, they will do everything. And Jesus said, these are the people on earth, but their souls are in hell. These are the people working for demons. You have some people on earth, they don't believe anything. They are on their own, do all sorts of bad. Even this pastor, they know the truth, but they are bowing to Satan. They are partakers of Satan communion. 
their, their souls are in that place. And Jesus put a man in the fire. And then the man introduced himself to me. Say, I'm Gaddafi. Because you know, no. The way he has destroyed, the fire has destroyed him, the way the demon has Say, I'm Gaddafi, Kone Gaddafi, from president in Libya, former. He said, tell my Libya people to worship Jesus. He said, tell my people to believe in Jesus. He said, ah, Jesus, have mercy. I never knew you were the right way. Have mercy on me. He said, even the people that kill me on earth, I don't want them to come here. Tell my people to believe that Jesus is the right way. And he even gave me a message, say, because why he gave me this message, I will tell you. He said, all the mocks that he built on earth, he said they should make, destroy and make it to church. They would make, change the mocks to church. So that people will glorify Jesus. Maybe the punishment will decrease on him in hell. Because anything you build on, on earth that is not glorifying Jesus, that is not glorifying God, that is not making people to come to their right father, you build these hotels, bar, anything that is sinful on this world, when you die, you leave this structure on earth. People will be there doing all sorts of evil things. As long as people are enjoying in this place, or doing all sorts of evil practice there, is not going to find Jesus. The demon will increase the pain on you on hell. So, he said, please, please, so that the pain will decrease. I know if people will worship in my mocks, Jesus, they will call Jesus there. Maybe the pain will decrease. And Jesus said, it's too late. And then I saw another president, Lanson Aconte, former president of Guinea. Why Jesus showed me this man of God, this president, sorry? Because he gave me a message to our president. But when I saw, when I met my president in Sierra Leone, he loved God. He obeyed the message. I thank God for his life. Because people were talking all sorts of things, men of God, but he obeyed the message. And I'm thank God for his life. President Lance and Aponte, former president of Guinea. He said, Tell my people in Guinea, let Guinea, let Jesus take over Guinea. Let them turn to Jesus, because Jesus is the only way. Where is he? He don't want anyone to be there. He said, tell my family to believe and trust in Jesus. He said, he built a cult that he was sponsoring and he was in the cult group. He said, he want the people to destroy that cult. Tell the people to destroy that cult. Let them come to Jesus. And then we have one famous man of, uh, one famous uh, lawyers, lawyer, just died. Usher Williams, former lawyer a deputy speaker of the House of Parliament in Sierra Leone. He was in one cult. They called the cult in Sierra Leone Lodge. And he was in this devil business, devil, devil, ordaining devils, dancing devils. He said, let me tell his cult, his lodge brothers, that they should come out of lodge. They are heading to hell. All his lodge brothers that died before him, he saw them in hell. He said, please, Destroy Lodge. Destroy these devils. He said, please, come to Jesus. It's the only way. Hell is real. And then, I saw one prophet. Prophet Manny. He was the owner of Bonnie Bush. That man said, he's going to die. But when he died, he will rise again in three days. He was again in three days. And when he, dead, he died, they take his body to the mortuary. The congregation, the people said they should not bury their papa. After three days, he will rise and goes again. He be there in one month until the mortuary people say, hey, come and take your papa. I saw this man in hell. He said, tell the people that was attending my church that 
I do miracles and signs and wonders all. He said, those communion, those anointing oil, those miracles I did on them. He said, after I did all these things, after they partake from this, this anointing oil, he said, I ordained them and then I dedicated them to the demon. He said, tell them to go to a, a, a church so that they will deliver them. They will deliver them so or else if they die, they will come to us because I ordained them for Satan. Satan is the one that was giving me this, all this power. Say, so tell them. And they should destroy my church because the foundation is from Satan up to the roof. Please. And I saw one woman, of, one woman I like, a musician. I love her so much. I always listen to her music when I was in the world. With me, Austin. He said, she said, sorry. He said, tell my mother to take my only daughter to church. He said, all the finance I left behind. He said, let them support God. Let them support Jesus' ministry. Let them support holiness ministry. Let them support God's word. Let them support Christians. The right Christian. He said, let a child grow in church and know Jesus. Please tell my mother, Jesus, please have mercy. Let me go back to the world and tell people you are real. Let me tell this musician. And Jesus said, it's too late. And even my biological parents, I saw them in hell. My mother, my father, and even my grandmother that just died this January. I don't like to talk about that. It's very painful. It's only the grace of God. I don't like to talk about hell. Sometimes, if they call me to go and preach, go and tell the testimony, I would say, no, I'm not going to because I know I reach this side. And one day Jesus said, if you, if you stop preaching my word or tell my people my word, I will destroy you. So I always pray to Jesus whenever I stand to give this testimony. Let him give me the boldness. Let him give me the strength. Because for any time I think of my parents, I love my mother so much. I love her so much. Oh God. She loves Jesus. She was praying. She said, please, I miss you guys. Tell your sister to follow Jesus. I don't want you people to come here. Oh, God, have mercy. Please, mother. Don't leave your children behind. You know the truth right now. Take your children along. I don't even recognize my mother anymore. I don't want to go to her. I love my mother so much. But I said, anywhere my mother is God, I want to be. When Jesus showed me my mother, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be with her there. Don't go to hell. Hell is real. Hell is not a place for people like us. And then God showed me a young boy. By the age of five, six years. Because of a witchcraft. God said, I will judge all men. When Pastor Kempo said it, say a child that have a normal son that we know bad from wrong. I argued that man in my spirit. I said, No, God will not do something like that. That's why God showed me this boy, a small boy, because of witchcraft. Satan is wicked. Now, if you go to the crusade, they say witchcraft come out. In Sierra Leone, you see small, small children. 
If you don't deliver these children, don't leave your children behind when you are coming to touch a program like this. Come with them so that Jesus will deliver them. If you leave them, they die, they'll go to a hell, no matter how they small, as long as they have sense, they know what is bad and good. Beat your child for evil things. Don't say it's a child. Please. And another woman, I saw another woman in Kailau. He was looking, he was in Kailau when she died. He was a holiness, he was a believer in Jesus. He married to a Muslim man. And then he backslide. He said, Tell my daughter, I love their father so much, I trusted him. Not knowing that this man was in occultic practice. He sacrificed his wife. He said, tell them to go out. Tell them to stand firm in church. In, G- in Jesus is the only way. He gave me the man name, address. When, when we return back, as Papa Daddy said, we will try and go and do a tour. I saw Satan factory of jewels when Jesus showed me. Jesus, uh, Satan have people that demon that is producing these things. You don't know where this gold comes from. You say it's a married ring. You don't know where this revolve. You say it's a fashion. This bracelet, this eyelash, this eyelash, Satan and Pete. The armpit, the air under the hand, they are manufacturing at this eyelash. I say, oh God, when Jesus opened your eyes to see certain things, you, we women, we men buy and put on. Even this clothes, even this clothes we are wearing, you buy, it's polluted. That's why we go to pray with us and pray on everything. God show me this market woman. Market men, they are with Satan. They pollute the food we eat. This hospital, these doctors, this new doctor you see, these new nurses, they are agents of darkness. Schools in Sierra Leone, God said, 80% of the children in that school, the teacher, children, they are, they, are agent, they are children of darkness. They pollute, they initiate their, their friends. The world is, is getting bad every day. Beware of evil things. Anything you buy, pray on it. Anything, pray on it. This, please, let's don't think about doing this with wrong things anymore. They are evil. They are evil. They are evil. This jewelry, ring, bracelet. Wedding ring, no matter whose kind of ring, wedding ring, earring, eyelash, eye pencil, mascara. As for me, you see, it's tattoo. They punish me in hell for this tattoo, and my, I have tattoo on my hand. The devil was using hot, hot, hot iron. When he put it like this, the old flesh will come out, and the flesh will be placed back for tattoo. That's why I'm telling people, you that like tattoo, you that have tattoo on your body, go to God in prayer for mercy. Because Satan will use that against you. Let God say, I'm forgiving you. And Jesus showed me, when Satan was ordaining some of these pastors, they will bow to Satan. Satan will lay hands on them. And Satan... We give them this handkerchief. Beware of handkerchief. My pastor gave me this handkerchief. They are selling handkerchief in church. Handkerchief. Handkerchief is not of Jesus. You put your faith on that. This is the anchor you got Jesus and uh, the men of God give me. Anyway, I want to go, I should wait my it's a it's an evil practice. You two don't see. Handkerchief, oil, oil. Satan is ordaining, putting strange power on this oil. 
You will see some pastors will tell you, come with the oil. He has his own oil. He will dilute his own oil with you and say it's pure. Without praying or doing anything. Be careful of this oil. Anointing oil. Water. Holy water. You will not drink no water. Is that holy water? Be careful. Be careful. You are nailing yourself under Satan's feet. These are all things of the devil to take your mind out of God. You will just follow this pastor. You will just follow this evil practice. Salt. Go and cook salt. So put it in the water and spring it in your house. Be careful. Communion. I saw Satan is ordaining this. Satan even give men, some of these men of God communion. This, this juice. They came with it. They polluted. They polluted communion. They gave you people. That's why you don't know your senses. You like this church. You like this man of God. No matter prophecy came out of this man of God or women of God. You fight for them. Fight for yourself. Some of you will say, I will die with my pastor. I believe that pastor is a lie. He said this. You don't even know. This communion, this anointing, this handkerchief, they are taking your sense away from you. They are manipulating you. See the pastor will wave the pocket hand like this. People will fall down. Say it's a miracle. That pocket hand has the power. Candles. Candles. Come with candles. Pray on candles. As for the Catholic, they pray with candles and the image. They are just casting spell on them. Jesus showed me when Satan was given this evil, invisible gloves. It, the, the men of God will have these invisible gloves. And when they went to church, they will lay hands on you people. All of us have the glory of God. This head, be careful of your head. They lay hands, they take your glory. And they leave a stamp on you, we you know, an invisible stamp, that this is a candidate to Satan, it's a candidate to hell. And then after all the process, they will take these invisible gloves and, or, and give it back to Satan. They will take it to their even altar. That's why you see some church. In certain year or month, people will just die in the church. Because they control you. Where they want to sacrifice, they will just say a word. You people first will show on the screen. The one Satan chooses, he choose. And the pastors will know. The bishop will know. He will come to your house and pray. Is the one that sacrificed you for pop, for money for population. Be careful of this evil church. Be careful of this man of God. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. And then Jesus said, "You are going back to the world. Tell my people." Any bishop wife, any man of God, any signs of wonders man of God, any pope, any man, any pastor's wife is putting on this thing. Any prophetess, even if he prophesies and he, thousands of people is putting on these things, she will not see my face. Any woman in and out of the church, putting on trousers, putting on ribbon, putting on eyelash, putting on earring, this gold teeth, the, this shining teeth you have, tattoo, evil things, this nails, this false nails, you, bleaching of body, bleaching cream, you will not see God, tinting of the ear, panning of the ear, stretching your ear, you want it to look light and nice. You will not see God's face. This is a leakage God is giving us. Study hard so you will pass the exam. Jesus loves us so much. He's giving us leakage. The exam is too hard. You can't pass it without Jesus giving you leakage. Now Jesus is giving you leakage of this fake man of God. Of this evil things, this evil practice, this thing that is taking you away from God's glory. This thing that they, tell, they told you that is not necessary, put it on, beautify yourself. Jesus is telling you now, they are evil. This is a leakage. Take it and study well. 
take it and study well. Please, please, my mother, please, my sister out there, please, my brother, all these men or young youth boy that used to put on dread. One of the demons I saw in hell have dread on the head. All this, this boy put on dread. Any kind of fashion you see in barb, you put on your trousers down, you show your, your brief out, you bow your hair, you plant, you are sleeping with girls up and down. You are, you are, you are in club, you are drinking, you are smoking, you are doing this tattoo. If you don't change, if you don't come to God now, you are going to hell, no mercy. If you don't repent, you young man I'm talking to, you know I'm talking to you. If you don't repent, you say it's fashion. My ear don't have nothing to do with this. Dread, only dread will take you to hell. This bab, bar will tell me, you leave, put all this here around me and leave this one alone. It's an evil bab. Don't do it. Stop looking at fashion. Be a gentleman. You will see real trousers. Your, your brief all is out. You will tattoo your whole body. You will put earring. You will plant. You want to be like a woman. Now some, some boys in Sierra Leone, they will tattoo their lip so that it will look pink, red. Be careful. You are heading to hell. You are heading to hell. Be careful. And then when Jesus said, it's time for you to go, Satan said to Jesus, he said, he said Jesus, he said, you are wasting your time. He said, your people you die for. He said, I've captured them with miracles, signs and wonders. He said, they like prophecy. He said, this thing you are doing, taking people to come and see hell heaven, no matter what you do, they, have, they, are, they will not believe. He said, because they are doomed. And Jesus said, go and tell my people. Go and tell my people, I will not change my word for nobody. Anyone that did not do my will, or men of God did not preach my old truth, or listen to my warning and change their ways, or women did not change their appearance, or dress decently. He said, no woman, no man, if he or she did not obey my old truth, that's why he gave us the Bible. Anything they told you in church, you don't believe, read the Bible. Ask God, God, speak to me if this thing is true. If you, leave, if you miss heaven, my brother, my sister, hell is so painful. You will regret your life on heart. And then when Jesus said, Father Abraham will take you along. And then Father Abraham was bringing me back to heart. These two people, Father Abraham and Moses, I like them in the Bible. I was imagined to see them. And I was so happy Jesus showed me them. Father Abraham, it was almost three or four years ago he died. Something like that. I don't know. But I think he's young, like a young baby. Father Abraham looks young. He looks fresh. The glory. You don't owe. You don't seek in heaven. You don't have stress. And he gave me a word of courage, not a message. Father Abraham did not give me a message, just a word of courage. Say, my daughter, tell the people in the world that Satan is a liar. Say, tell them to believe Jesus. He said, the time is near. We are preparing for you. He said, please tell them. We want them all. Let them believe in Jesus. Satan is a liar. All the warning that Jesus gave you. He said, tell them to believe in it. It is not a lie. Please tell them. Tell them. He was telling me, tell them, tell them, tell them. And then I noticed I was in a heart back with my family. And then since that time, God will start using me, telling me prophecy. I will prophesy. I will tell people, if you want to tell me something, you will tell me. But the demon fights me. Because this thing happened to me Friday. On Saturday, 
Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. The demon fight. There are thousands of demons that don't want me to deliver this message because they know women will change, men will change, pastors will change, people in the world will change. As in happening now in Sierra Leone, youth are changing, people of God are changing, some pastors are changing. They say, oh, we believe, if we know, God will not call us because we too, we are afraid of telling the people the old truth because we are afraid. If we preach holiness, people will leave the church. So we too will dilute the truth. It's about now, we will preach, we will stand for holiness. So I thank God, and I know God is going to do it too in your life and in Nigeria. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Up upon our feet and begin to thank the Lord. Pray for your soul. Let the Lord save you from hell. Let God save you from hell. Thank the Lord for his word. Let God save you from hell. you from hell.
give your life to Jesus. 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 yourself to God. We consecrate yourself to Jesus. Surrender to him. Surrender to him. Surrender to him. Secret your love to Jesus. You are in witchcraft, you are an adulterer, whatever sin of fornicator, drunkard, in occultism, whatever sin, it is time to give your life to Jesus. You are you are a backslider, you are giving back your life to Jesus. Now, if you are giving your life to Jesus, raise up your hand. You are giving your life to Jesus. Raise up your hand outside and inside. Outside and inside. Outside and inside. Tell Jesus you're sorry. Tell Jesus to forgive you. Let him come back into your he come into your life. Backslider. Tell Jesus to come back. Tell Jesus to come back. Let him come back into your life. Let Jesus come back into your life. Let Jesus come back into your life. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus.
last name we pray. Now lay hand upon yourself. I want to commit you again, to commit you to Jesus. I'm going to pray the prayer of forgiveness for your love. The prayer of recommitment in case you are a Christian. Now you are going over to holiness. I'm praying a recommitment prayer for your Lord. You are going to move to holiness. In Jesus name we pray. Lord you have appeared to us. You have shown us mercy. You have sent a hot message from hellfire. A hot message from the very presence from heaven. Unto us. This day. Lord you are not hitting the truth. You have mission need of God from man to man. Woman to woman. You have opened the eyes of your people. In dark churches. Churches under doom. Lord you have spoken. Lord, now your people have come out. Now your people have come out. Now your people are gasping for air. They're gasping for grace. They're crying for mercy. Oh Lord, roll away iniquity in the name of Jesus. My Father, break down the mountain of iniquity. Break down the shrines of iniquity. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Moshe, let the blood of Jesus, the blood of the cross, walk in our lives. Walk in our lives. Oh Lord, cleanse your people with your blood. In the name of Jesus. Remove iniquity from their lives. Let righteousness, the garment of righteousness, be put on. Everybody, the garment of righteousness, the garment of holiness, the robe of righteousness. Let the, the, the Lord put it upon your life. Let the Lord put it upon your life. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.